You're a member of the Senate GOP leadership. Are you okay with this? Well, hey, look, I, I can never talk about respond to why anybody else says what they said. But here's what it, is the way I looked at it is I think, you know, what the president is saying is, you know, we've there's been a lot of money spent over the last two years. Um, as you know, you know, the president likes, likes to give people nicknames. You can ask him how he came up uh, with the nickname. Uh, I'm sure he has a nickname for me. You know, and I, don't, I don't condone violence and I hope any, no one else condones violence. That stumbling, bumbling, fearful man. His name is Senator Rick Scott. You guys have heard about this guy. Uh, right now, he's afraid. He's afraid of Donald Trump. He's afraid of what Donald Trump might do or say if he says, that stuff that you said is racist and it's violent. Let's tell you what Donald Trump said that Rick Scott is so damn afraid of uh, addressing there. Here's his uh, truth that Donald Trump put out. Is McConnell approving of all these trillions of dollars worth of Democrat sponsored bills without even the slightest bit of negotiation because he hates Donald J. Trump and he knows I'm strongly opposed to them? Or is he doing it because he believes in the fake and highly destructive Green New Deal? And is he willing to take the country down with him? In any event, either reason is unacceptable. Here's, uh, here's that part that uh, everyone's afraid of. He has a death wish, all capitals. He must immediately seek help. And advice from his China loving wife, Coco Chow, C H O W. That's from Donald Trump, former president of the United States. So, death wishes, Coco Chow. What is he trying to say except I'm rapidly and insanely racist? You should keep following me. You can keep denying that he is, but he keeps telling you that he, you deny that he is, but he, Continues to let you guys know and illustrate just how bad he is. So uh, Dana Bash was uh, talking to uh, um, Scott there, Senator uh, Scott there, and she asked him more, a little bit more. It's like, are you for real? Let's see what else he has to say. Nicknames are one thing, but this, this is this appears racist. Is that okay? It's never ever okay to be a racist. Um, um, it's in the, you know, look, I think you always have to be careful. You know, if you're in the public, you know, eye how you how you say things. You want to make sure you're inclusive. You want to make sure, uh, like yesterday in the neighborhood I was in, we had people probably from ten countries that live there, and so that's what's great about this country. And what I I know what I try to do is try to make sure everybody, everybody, uh, especially all their kids, believe they have hope and they can dream. Live the dream of this country. So I hope no one is racist. I hope no one says anything that's inappropriate. Um, so I'm going to do everything I can. Powerful words from Senator Scott. Hey, uh, I just I, I I would hope no one's racist. I'm going to do all I can, except even mention the fact that this is rapidly racist and absolutely violent. Coco Chow. Anyways. Uh, Rick Scott thought that he nailed that one, so he went on. Um, uh, he went on. I think uh, uh, face the nation. To talk about this further, but he got a little bit more pushback there too. Let's watch his appearance there. Watch how cowardly this guy is. Would you rebuke those comments? Well, I think what we got to do is we got to bring everybody together. I would also say that what Vice President Harris said yesterday, that our day before yesterday, that you know, if you, if you have a different skin color, you're going to get relief that's faster. Not what the, that does, that's, that's not, not what the either. Vice President so said. We, but I'm specifically asking you about Marjorie Taylor Greene and, and no, 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 President wait, no, no, Trump. No, no, wait, 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 Margaret, Margaret, let's make sure. FEMA has to be colorblind. But what I quoted you was a phrase saying McConnell has a death wish. He said racist things about Elaine Chow. I, th I, I think we all have to figure out how do we start bringing people together and have a common goal to give every American the opportunity to get a great job, their kids to have an education. They believe they can be anything. And you would agree that that language doesn't bring people together? I believe that what the I believe what the President Trump was talking about is the fact that we can't keep spending money. We are we're going to hurt our poorest families the most with this reckless Democrat spending. Okay, that's not what the former president said. Um, and Coco Chow was the phrase he used to refer to a former cabinet secretary, Elaine Chow. He, look, he likes for, you know, he, he gives people nicknames. I'm sure he has a nickname for me, all right? So you can ask him what he means by his nicknames. Okay, but I know, Senator, you know that Democrats have not already started the killings of Republicans, as Marjorie Taylor Greene has said. 
I didn't see what she said, but it's also not helpful what the vice president says. Already started the killings uh, really stood out to me, so I wanted to make sure you responded to that comment. We'll leave it there. Thank you and good luck. I didn't hear it. Let's bring people together. Please pray, pray for our state. Profiles encouraged there, Jessica. Yeah, yeah, we are already on the brink of civil war in this country. I think we know this and it's scary that that people are so fearful because they're in a position where they don't have a lot of money, they don't have a lot of power and they're scared and they're willing to fight. But how did they get there? Let's talk about that. What they're saying about government spending is insane. Of course, I have to talk about that. Uh, the problem is, is that McConnell uh, is absolutely not supporting bills for government spending. Even Joe Biden has reduced the deficit. So the total dollars that have been put into the economy, he's taxing them back out and not putting new dollars out there. So he's reduced the deficit by 350 billion and this year it's gonna be $1.5 trillion. When we see fiscal tightening and not a lot of public sector spending, the private sector tends to go into deficit. This happened under the Clinton administration. And that's a condition that leads to a recession. So he's saying that we're spending too much money and that's going to make poor people hurt in this country. The opposite of that is true. And the Green New Deal is a really good policy to take democratic control of our monetary system, which is currently being run for the benefit of elites and people who run the economy. The Green New Deal would allow us to spend public dollars with a high rate of return to build renewable energy infrastructure, get us to full employment. So those poor people he's claiming will be hurt by not spending will actually not be kept intentionally unemployed by the Federal Reserve. And it's insane that they're framing this kind of spending as something that would be bad. It will make more people employed, it has a huge return on investment. Listen, we get to two degrees of warming and we're experiencing mass extinction. We need to transition to renewable energy for that reason. But also, uh, when you build windmills, when you build wind turbines, uh, and you build solar panels, now you've got sustainable energy infrastructure in the country. So to frame policies that would help working people as things that will actually damage the poor in the country without explaining your thinking there and reasoning is dangerous. And it's why these people are willing to fight. They're like, oh my God, the government's not working for us at all. When let's also recognize the establishment Democrats are also not even fighting for the Green New Deal. So they're pushing us so far right and telling people to take up arms to fight policies. They're not even pushing that would actually help us if they were. Uh, sad state of affairs. It'd be quite the boring debate if they were saying these establishment Democrats aren't doing anything that those libs want them to do. And we agree with them. It wouldn't be very good. So you just paint the whole thing as uh, President Biden is a super lib and he's pushing all these policies. By the way, yeah. the fact you address all of those actual things that they try to uh, derail from the actual conversation from to get to the Green New Deal and all that. They don't even want to get that far in the debate. They just want to throw out the tag names and say, this is what you're afraid of. And that's what you're afraid of. Also that too. By the way, what Donald Trump is mad about, graphic too, really fast. We go to this break, you guys. He's mad because. He didn't specify which bill he was mad about Mitch McConnell and his wife over. But he did, the Senate on Thursday did pass a bill to keep the government funded in a 72 to 25 vote that includes support from McConnell and other Republicans. And also earlier in the week, McConnell said he would back a bipartisan legislation aimed at protecting against election subversion. So he was upset at him over those things. Nothing actually really close to the, to the depths of the policy behind the things that they're against. It doesn't matter. They're not actually debating about policy because they want to be so far from that, it's insane.